What's up, guys? Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now, we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center and store again today. And we're going to talk about specifically mercury vapor bulbs themselves. Okay? Just before we get into that, right in that bottom corner is our subscriber button. Now, make sure you hit that. And for those that already have, we appreciate you following along week after week after week. Now, let's get right into this. Okay. So, Mercury vapor bulbs. Now, most folks know that we are a proponent of mercury vapor bulbs, and there's going to be some people that's not, and that's okay. Uh, we're also a proponent of products that work, that are proven to work, whether, whether it's class classified as ancient, archaic, old school, or whether it's new school, doesn't matter as long as it actually does, or at least comes close to doing what it's proposed to do. Mercury vapor bulb was created years ago as a singular source to be able to get both your UVA, UVB, and your heat in a singular source versus having to go to multiple sources and having multiple outlets, having multiple bulbs, having multiple lamps, constantly having things that you have to either replace or having multiples up. So great idea, right? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. The question is, how efficient and how effective are mercury vapor bulbs? So, you know, I seen a video the other day that was shared from an individual. And this individual was talking about mercury vapor being more of an opponent against mercury vapor versus a proponent of. And that's fine. That's, you know, whatever. Gave a little bit of science and lighting and UVI and infrared a little bit. The problem was the person was more of a opponent of mercury vapor and didn't give any other alternative options. None. So that's kind of a problem. Efficiency when it comes to alternative options. And when you have a problem with something or you're trying to downplay the effectiveness of a product, but you're not giving alternative options for people to be able to come to their own conclusions or do their own research as to, okay, these, he says these are better products. She says these are better products. Let me go see how they relate out. So, unfortunately, I have to debunk this particular individual because they did not really give any additional science as to these are better. Here's why. Here's at least my graphs that I've done over, you know, a few months of research. Okay. One of the things that was showed is this particular meter. Now, granted, not, and we thank SolarMeter.com for sending us this one. They sent us this one. We bought this one, a totally different one. This one does absolutely say it registers the UVI, which is going to be more of that radiation. So as part of one of the videos that we had seen, talked about the levels, and even in one of our videos, we showed distances from, but it wasn't for the effectiveness of the UV itself, like, like meaning the, what it read was like, oh, look how hard this is. No. It was, look how far it's effective from the bulb or from the meter, right? So certain bulbs, you had to get down real close before it really started reading. Some, you could be way out here, but the closer you got, the higher the reading got. Now, yes, granted, some of that is going to be absolute radiation exposure. So with mercury vapor bulbs, one of the things that you do absolutely have to be careful about is your distances from, because yes, you can give your animal a sunburn. Absolutely. But one of the things that was failed to be mentioned in this was, a lot of talk about infrared, lumens, Kelvin, UVA, UVB, all of that was failed to be talked about. And there's importance to this. And I'm actually going to talk about Kelvin, and especially Kelvin, but lumens and Kelvin a little bit in this video and talk about why some of that is absolutely important. Now, one of the things that was mentioned was white lighting. Yes, different color lightings. We're not so big of a fan of the, of the red light or the deep blue lights because it's not a natural light. Think of when you go into a, a club or into a restaurant or, you know, something like that, and it's got these really deep, hard lights, reds, or especially reds, it makes your vision just really wonky, right? And it's, it's, it's a different kind of viewing. Well, it's no different than reptiles sitting under those same lights continually themselves, or it, even worse, using them as nightlight. Well, it's so bright, they're still not getting restful sleep. With an additional meter, like we bought an additional one, we have several, so we always try and do multiple tests. And always try and make sure we give alternative options uh, as well, because there's always alternative options. But this one right here says it reads UVB. Does not, like this one, say anything about the UVI. This one is specifically for UVB, and it even gives different meters. So there's many different types of meters. 
So you can do your tests under multiple different meters. Now I've had even my own customers that'll go and they'll do, and they'll do, and we encourage that. They'll do their own tests, right? They'll get their own meters. They'll do their own tests from everything from the fluorescent tube. To, and this is old school. They are useless. Okay. The tube fluorescent bulbs, UVB bulbs, um, that I don't care who the maker is from Zoomed to Reptisun to, to Arcadia to, I don't care what the maker is. They're not as effective. They're not as efficient. And I have seen personally over 20 years, we have seen almost all of our cases of MBD come in when somebody has the UVB lighting under those tubed or those curly bulbs. They're like, well, I've got this under the UV. Guess what? It's not effective. I don't care so much about what a computer says. I care about what we see as far as research. But you have to care about both in some aspect, okay? What computer results say will tell us Okay, this may affect this animal this way. This may not affect this animal this way. But also, the proof is in the pudding. When you have animals under them for extended periods of time and you see the effects, physical in-person research and you see the effects of what each bulb can or cannot do or does or does not cause, proof is in the pudding. Okay, now let's go back to mercury vapor bulbs. Now, mercury vapor bulbs, yes, every single one can give different readings. Unfortunately, the, the bulbs, when they are made, they are man-made, right? So each manufacturer may have a different level of reading. So it is important to kind of understand what some of your distances should be when you're using mercury vapor bulb. Are there other options? Ceramic heat emitters, yes. That was talked about. DP projections, that was talked about. One of the things in one of the videos I've seen, the only thing they talked about was everything not to use, which is about everything that is in the reptile community to use. So um, unfortunately, like I said, this, this, this particular individual just has to be, you know, kind of thrown in the, uh, in file 13 and, and just let that, let that nonsense go. But let's talk about some things here. One of the things that I have, I have taught for years, we have seen this in our own research, in our own studies, in our own time of being able to work with these animals medically. As most people know, Reptiles produce vitamin D2, but they cannot naturally convert it to VD3, right? To vitamin D3. That's where UVB exposure comes in, but also the calcium with the D3. Now understand this, everybody knows. While it's important to have UVB exposure, UV also kills things and deadens things faster. Okay? Hence why <laughs> here's a lady that likes laying out in the sun for years and years and years looks like a shriveled old prune, maybe 20 years later because the sun has damaged that. You have animals and plants that under UV exposure don't get as big and they don't live as long, nor do humans anymore. Things break down under intense long-term UV exposure. So I say that to say this, one of the studies that we had done was under calcium with vitamin D3 additives to the food. A lot of the times you can do completely away with a UVB bulb, specifically, because you're direct injecting that animal. Now, I'm not saying to do that, because God knows that, you know, a lot of the reptile community come out, ah, oh, no, he said never give them UV. No, I didn't. You want to give them UVB bulb, go for it. It is handy, and it does help with the natural conversion. But when you're doing a good calcium and vitamin D and multivitamins, that does a lot of the same thing. This is where I'm going to get into the deep science of this. Kelvin is known as light spectrum. The more Kelvin you have, the more colors of the light spectrum that you have. Kelvin is important for, especially in plants. Now, there's a difference between plants and animals, yes. But in plants, it's important for, for growth, formation, density, color. There are so many things that the light spectrum does for plant and animal. It is incredibly important. That's also equally why you can have a lot of species that very rarely or never see a whole lot of sunlight do just fine, and they never have that UV exposure. But they have what they need from their diet and from the environment that is around them. They get what they need, okay? Now, that's up to us as a keeper to be able to know what we're supposed to give them or making sure that they're getting the balance of diet and vitamins and minerals and different things that they have and they need so that they get what they're supposed to have in the event that there is a lack of something else like UVB. Use, for example, a Dr. Kai Morai did a test. He took a cherry tomato put it in a perfect environment, no UV exposure of any form. In the appropriate, perfect temperatures, in a perfect lighting situation, and the cherry tomato, 
and a lot of the other tomato plants became enormous with enormous tomatoes. UV can be a bad thing at the same time that it's being a good thing. Now, this is just test. This is just giving you information of a lot of different things that's happening. Again, am I saying don't ever use UV? No, use UV. Am I saying only do this? No, you have multiple options. See, that's the downside to one of the videos that I watched. It was all just don't do this. Don't do this. This is why this is bad. This is why this is bad. This is why this is bad. And kind of partial half truth information. Half. OK, but no alternatives to here's a better option. This is a good option. Do this if you're going to do this. It's just all don't do that. With very little explanation behind the true why, more than a personal opinion. Mercury vapors can be kind of expensive, but when you start buying two bulbs, it becomes quite a bit more expensive. But there are other options that you can use of UVB sources. Again, we have one right here. I'll put it up. Did a test. It did great. An LED source that did phenomenal. Didn't quite compare to the level of exposure as a mercury vapor. But again, that's not always bad in some cases. There's a lot of animals that we will tell folks, you don't need a mercury vapor for that one. It's going to be a bit too much. But mercury vapor is a great source when it comes to your reptiles and getting both the heat and the exposure. Infrared goes directly to a surface versus most of your electric heat is heating up the whole environment. Yes, infrared or day basking bulbs, if it has infrared in it, it's going to heat up surfaces, but it's going to heat up the environment as well. So again, there's a lot of things that was misinformation or not informed on in this video about just heating sources, lighting sources, UVA, UVB, UVI. Okay, he wanted to focus on the UVI, as it were. So we have to understand that there's a lot more to lighting than just a single fixed and focusing on point. We have to understand lumens. Lumens is how bright it is. From lower light to brighter light, from low white to high white. Kelvin is the color spectrum. UVB is ultraviolet B, which is important for vitamin D. UVI, yes, is radiation. How much radiation exposure, meaning sunburn, intensity of the sunlight. So you have to be careful of your distances. You have to be careful of your wattages. You have to understand your enclosed spaces or your open spaces. So there is science that goes behind this. And if somebody is familiar with working with these types of bulbs, they're going to be able to help you in navigating this and going, yep, this is what you need. It needs to be at this distance or it needs to be here. Put it here. Do this, add this hide, or make this kind of shelving or this kind of foliage. Put it here. That way there's sunlight and there's not, it's not full intense exposure. You know, so in, with any kind of UVB bulb, it doesn't matter what it is. You can have goods and bads to any, from curlies to tubes to mercury vapors to even, I'm sure, to LEDs, even though it's an LED source, if done incorrectly or done too close, too far away, can be just as ill effective or dangerous. Now, unfortunately, most bulbs that we have out there don't have all the wavelengths perfectly. Understand, we're dealing with man made stuff. Nature does it best, nature's in control of it best. But when we try and recreate nature, it becomes very, very difficult, even with recreating ecosystems, trying to make the ecosystems as perfect to nature, as close to nature as absolutely possible. It becomes very difficult because, again, we're the ones doing it versus nature doing what she's supposed to be doing. Right. So when we start talking about different bulbs, which one's better, which one's worse, why you should or shouldn't use this one or what the disadvantages or advantages to using one or to using the other is. There's a lot of factors that go in that, but a lot of what it really boils down to is <laughs> that was kind of knocked on. Been using it for years and it works. Okay, great. That doesn't necessarily mean a good thing, but that doesn't necessarily not mean a good thing. When you have a facility or multiple facilities that's doing something, they're using something, they're testing something for years and it works. That means it works. <laughs> All right. Now, can everything be improved upon? Yes, absolutely. We could have. The great thing about science is science is always evolving, is always trying to grow, always trying to improve upon itself. Yes, you can always improve. You can always have better. You can always create something that's more efficient. But with the excesses that we have right now, got to go with what works. All right. And a lot of things can work. 
The question is, for the budget, what is going to be the best options? And right now, most people are worried about money. So if they're going to go with cheap or less expensive, then we need to make sure that we're giving people the right information about the best options for the least expenses. Yeah, some people's going to go, well, they shouldn't spare any expense for their animals. Yeah, I mean, maybe so, but maybe you need to be paying them better or, you know, offering them money. OK, uh, if you if you want somebody to get the top of the line stuff or everything that they have, then go ahead and fund it. Now, granted, maybe they, people shouldn't get things if they can't afford them. And I 100 percent agree with that. But there's a lot of options and there's a lot of alternatives that people can do that are efficient for the animals. And it doesn't have to be just one or the other, just based off of somebody's personal or partial scientific opinion. In talking about mercury vapor, mercury vapor, there are so many different varieties of mercury vapor. And some sources are, some of your cheaper sources are gonna be less effective. Some of your more expensive sources are gonna be more effective. Sometimes. Sometimes you're paying for a name, sometimes you're not. But in 20 plus years worth of research and study and working with these types of animals to date, just for a singular source, I'm not talking about multiple sources, let's just talk about a single source that claims to do everything you need in a bowl, mercury vapor is still by far the best source. Dangerous? Yes, it can be, as any bulb can be. But that's understanding your bulb or working with somebody that knows how to help you with the bulbs with your particular application. Is mercury vapor perfect? No. Is day basking bulbs perfect? No. Is deep heat projectors perfect? No. Is ceramic heat emitters perfect? No. There's no perfect source and you have to do what you feel is best for your particular application. But mercury vapor is a really good source to use if you feel comfortable with those applications. I hope that some of this information has been helpful and kind of cleared up what some people will leave as very unanswered questions, more questions than more unanswered questions than, than answered questions. OK, yes, there are people that are completely opposed to mercury vapor and that's fine. Everybody's welcome to their opinion. And there are people that are totally 100 percent. It's all mercury vapor. We love mercury vapor, but we use other sources as well. But mercury vapor for a singular source is so far one of the best sources to use out there. And it does a really good job. Now again, we are the Kernersville Reptile Zoo Medical Center and store. And uh, this is Chad, we appreciate you coming along week after week after week. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, the like button, the bell for notification. Make sure to write us in and let us know of other things you want us to film about. Our information will be in the description below for those that need to get in touch with us. We take so many phone calls all the time and emails helping with questions. If you have a question or need help, feel free and get with us. Don't forget about our other social media, TikTok, Reptile Rangers, Instagram, Kernersville Reptile Zoo, Facebook, Kernersville Reptile Zoo. And then of course we have the storefront here if you're looking for your next pet or supplies. Again, we appreciate you coming along week after week after week. We'll live to see you here at the zoo. Or we'll see you in the next episode. Later.